I had no clue that you can't vote when you're on parole. You're depriving me of certain rights. You know, that could easily lead me backwards. I think that it's very important that you reestablish yourself as a citizen. I'm doing everything that a regular citizen would do, but you're telling me I can't vote. It's election season in the U.S., and while voting is one of the most fundamental rights of an American citizen, millions of people have had that right taken away. Here in New York State, more than 100,000 people can't vote due to a felony conviction. Many are long out of prison, working, and paying taxes like the average American. We're outside the headquarters for parole services in downtown Brooklyn, and today, Stephen and Brandon from an organization called Vocal New York are going to be canvassing outside and speaking to parolees about how to restore their right to vote. We're going up to Albany to meet with these state senators, and we want you to come and tell your story. Tell them why you believe you deserve to have your voting rights back. This legislative session, New York State is expected to consider a bill that would give voting rights to felons immediately after their release from prison. The current law doesn't restore voting rights until after parole. If passed this year, parolees like Stephen Johnson could potentially vote in the upcoming presidential election. We, we just, I just came home for doing 25, right? Uh, we doing it for all. Anybody that's ex-cons is coming home from jail and they try to stop us from voting. They try to take our rights. Stephen spent 25 years in prison for second-degree manslaughter. He was released three months ago. Hey, you got a second? Showing him the ropes no. is Brandon Holmes, a community organizer. He wasn't having it. They're more receptive to a guy who they know has been in there. I've been in every jail. Been around all these guys. And you got to talk to them like that. Like, we're formerly incarcerated. We know what it's like. We've been inside. We're back home now. We have the power to have this conversation in this space, and we need to start exercising that. Across the U.S., there are currently six million people with felony convictions who are banned from voting by laws that date back to the 19th century. In the U.S., there's no single law regarding voting rights for felons. In some states, a felon never loses the right to vote, even in prison. In others, those rights are lost forever. In most states, like New York, the right to vote can only be restored after a person completes their sentence, and that includes parole. It's fucked up that we can say we're fortunate in New York State that you can vote after you're done with parole, but the fact that you're even back in your community and some people are returning to life with their family and children, they gotta put food on the table and they can't vote for programs that could actually like save their community or save their family. So Stephen, why is voting important to you? When you come home after doing 25 years, I think that it's very important that you reestablish yourself as a citizen. Every citizen in any state has power. When you have voting power, that means that you count for something. By you voting someone in for office, say when you vote that person in, you can vote that person out. You know, you voting for him because you think he's going to do something for the people or your neighborhood, your community, your country. I'm doing everything that a regular citizen would do, but you're telling me I can't vote. Without that, you know, everybody's going to keep on looking at you like, oh, he's still a criminal. I feel that's how I feel about you know, the vote thing. You know, if I can't vote, then you can be saying I'm still a criminal. Stephen may always feel like a criminal because his sentence has him on parole for life. Who's ever heard of someone being on parole for life? Unless you know someone or like you've seen it. Before, well, you know? I have 25. I have 25 to life, and I'm out now, so I'm, I'm considerably as yes, life parole. So you could potentially never get your right to vote back. True. I worry about it. That's why I'm here now. I'm part of an organization that we're going to get this thing changed. We punish them for committing these crimes, but we're still going to trip them up and they're still gonna to continue to pay for this. It literally comes down to just racist policies. It all stems from Jim Crow era. Most felon disenfranchisement laws were enacted immediately after the Civil War, when the right to vote was extended to African-American men. Other laws passed at that time, like poll taxes and literacy tests, also sought to restrict access to the polls. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 reversed many of those restrictive laws, but not felon disenfranchisement. So today, there are actually five times as many African Americans barred from voting than there were before the Voting Rights Act passed. And that's because one out of every 13 African Americans can't vote because of felony convictions. 
a result of a criminal justice system that disproportionately locks up minorities. My job is to end mass incarceration. And that sounds like a huge, you know, blanket statement, but that starts with the collateral consequences, you know. When people are coming home and they can't get jobs and they can't get housing, they don't vote, you know, so they're not civically engaged, and then it leads to high recidivism rates. Proponents of these laws claim they deter criminals and provide retribution and rehabilitation. But the American Probation and Parole Association has said that there is no credible evidence to suggest these laws serve any legitimate law enforcement purpose. In fact, a study in 2004 found evidence to suggest that former prisoners whose voting rights were restored were significantly less likely to return to the criminal justice system. Stephen and his peers at Vocal are working towards changing the felon voting law in New York. And today, hey, he's leading Steve a meeting Johnson. to discuss why voting rights matter. We can't sit around and wait for other people that hasn't been incarcerated to ask them to fight for something that they don't understand. Everyone who showed up had been incarcerated and was dealing with the hardships of living with a felony conviction. I just came home to it for 34 years. You know, I cover my ties, I walk lightly, I don't curse, you know, but I'm voiceless. I had no clue that you can't vote when you're on parole. You're depriving me of certain rights. You know, that could easily lead me backwards. Some will be on parole for the rest of their life, mm -hmm. and that means you cannot vote for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And that's just all part of the disenfranchisement. I don't know if I said that word disenfranchisement. right. Disenfranchisement. Disenfranchisement <laughs> of minorities. The politicians are few, the people are many. They know that the people have the power, so in order for them to keep what they have, they try to take away as much of that power as they can. Without that power, you know, you don't have much, you know, to stand on. You don't count. No matter what you, no matter what you try to do, you really don't have much to say. You don't count. By you having voting rights, you're a part of your community. You you become a pillar in your community. There's three huge things. There's jobs, housing, and voting. When you've got a job, you're stable enough, right, and you're focused enough to maintain your housing. When you've got housing, you're comfortable, right, and you're, you're happy, you're content. Now voting is going to make sure that you can guarantee those things, not only for yourself, but for the future of your community. As we saw in 2000, presidential elections can be decided by as little as 537 votes. There are currently six million people banned from the ballot box because of felony convictions. And in a tight race, their votes could make all the difference. How would you feel if sometime in the next couple of months, the law in New York changes and you're able to vote in this election? I would go ahead and be the first one to sign up and vote. And then I would feel a lot better. <laughs> 